Within our first 11 months, we canceled or delayed over 1,500 planned regulatory actions, more than any previous president by far. Regulations are there to protect the common folk. And by cutting those regulations, you're just giving these corporations the green light to do whatever they want to to the people. We're lifting restrictions on American energy, and we've ended the war on coal. We're driving to a family whose water has become contaminated. They can even see like the black stuff that comes in to the water. This excessive regulation does not just threaten our economy, it threatens our entire constitutional system. And it does nothing other than delay and cost much more. It does nothing. These people around here, their health is more important than making a dollar. For decades, coal companies have been blasting off mountaintops in Appalachia to excavate coal buried hundreds of feet deep. Hey, look at the scale of that thing. Yeah, that's a big mine. Most people, they live around here, have, I mean, they don't have a good idea of the scale, really. After detonating millions of pounds of explosives, they use gigantic trucks to dump the waste rock into nearby valleys, burying and polluting the streams below. The mining you know, opens up new cracks in the rock, and it all increases the dam that loads the groundwater and surface water. This form of surface mining has buried more miles of stream than the entire length of the Mississippi River, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. There are neighborhoods right below these massive mines, and many of the people who live there rely on private wells for their water. We're in Wyoming County on our way to Coal Mountain where there's a big mountaintop removal mine. We're going to visit some families whose water has been contaminated. For two solid straight days, the, the creek was black as black could be. Jason lives with his mother, Sherry, at the base of Coal Mountain in West Virginia. They now have to pump water from a creek and buy water for drinking and cooking after their well became unusable. If I had to turn the pump on today, turn the faucet on, um, it would turn my, it would start out black. This is the well. This is before it even goes through a filtering system. It just, it eats the tank from inside out. Just imagine having white towels and getting out of the shower. And when you wipe off, that's what comes off your skin. Our water was drinkable and clear before all the mining activity started. When you have something that precious, that's, that's so convenient that people, people take for granted, when you turn the faucet on and it's unusable, it's, it's terrifying. Usually there's black stuff on it, but there, there's not today. Yeah, you got a, you got a clean day. Tests of Jason's well water revealed high levels of iron, manganese, and arsenic. Other families living nearby also found lead. I come from a family of coal miners people working around and in the mines. And my husband, before he passed, he was a miner. I'm not against the coal mines, not at all. But if they damage someone's property, they should be liable for it. So that's a valley fill right there. It's where they dumped the rock from the mountain that they blasted just over there. It once was just a valley with a stream running through it, but now the water that comes from the valley fill is highly contaminated, and there are houses all down this hollow over here. All of them rely on private wells, all of them at risk of contamination. The Stream Protection Rule was adopted in 2016. It required mining companies to monitor and restore streams. But Congress got rid of this rule in one of its first acts under the Trump administration. So this is what we have now. This is where we were in 1960. And when we're finished, which won't be in too long a period of time, we will be less than where we were in 1960. And we will have a great regulatory climate. 
Really the point of regulations is to give the average person a leg to stand on if something happens. Um, and people should be very much concerned about what the government allows to happen to folks. So the areas around these mine sites are not unpopulated areas. This is not some, you know, depopulated backwoods territory. This is where people live. So right up here we have the graves of my uh, eighth great-grandfather and eighth great-grandmother. Um, I grew up uh, very much pro-coal. I've had coal miners on both sides of my family. Uh, I, I really believed a lot of the rhetoric that came from the industry about how how good coal was for West Virginia, but it's, you know, they, they put us in the position to where we have to either choose our health or a paycheck um, when it shouldn't really be an either or um, decision. And now, you know, this peaceful resting place of my ancestors was completely surrounded by mountaintop removal coal mining. So uh, there was a mountain over there? There was a mountain over there. The whole area was once, you know, completely surrounded. You couldn't see out past the cemetery for the trees. And now that's all gone. Across Appalachia, 500 mountains have already been leveled or severely impacted by surface mining, according to an activist group, Appalachian Voices. There are strong, strong data out there that show that there are health impacts. These health impacts sometimes can take decades before they even show up. And by then, the coal is already mined out and the company is gone, and you can't pinpoint, you know, what was the cause of your illness. Over a dozen studies published by public health researchers have shown much higher rates of disease and death in counties with mountaintop removal compared to counties with other types of mining or no mining at all. A lot of these homes have, have high levels of hydrogen sulfide gas in them, and so you cannot bathe in it, which is a good idea, you cannot drink it, but every time you flush a toilet, you're releasing that gas. Every time you run water, you're releasing that gas, and a shower, a hot shower, releases tons of that gas. They're still being exposed. They can lessen that exposure, but they can't eliminate it. Dr. Scott Simonton has been studying the health risks of environmental pollution for decades. Until you have an understanding of what the health costs are, how can you even have a discussion on whether coal mining is good or bad if we don't know what it's doing to our communities? We would have been really able to make some recommendations about the potential health effects of surface coal mining operations that could have been used by states, by communities, by individuals to make decisions to improve their health. Dr. Paul Locke was one of the experts tasked by the National Academy of Sciences to review hundreds of existing studies on the health impacts of surface mining in central Appalachia. We had epidemiologists, we had toxicologists, we had uh, a lawyer scientist, me. We had uh, a geologist. We had somebody whose uh, specialty was studying how things blow up because a lot of explosive are used in, in coal mining. All in all, they're probably about 300 to 500 studies. So our job as a committee was to sort those studies, separate the good studies from the bad studies, the wheat from the chaff, and then based on the good studies to come to some conclusions about the potential health effects of surface coal mining in central Appalachia. Under the Trump administration, the Interior Department stopped the study even though it was already half completed. We were at a critical juncture as a committee. We were just at the point where we were going to start to knit all of this information together to start to develop some preliminary conclusions. But we didn't do that because we, we were disbanded before we could. When you look at the science and when you allow science and evidence to be your guide, you can make good decisions. The case of mountaintop removal highlights the dangers of letting industry interests, rather than science, lead regulatory policy. There's a real risk of politicizing science. And my concern is not only that science is politicized now, it's that science will be politicized for the future. Pollution knows no boundaries and everybody lives downstream. So if they can do this here and poison people downstream here, they can do it anywhere, whether it's the coal industry or another type of industry.